Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're talking about developing consistency in your MIG welds. What I mean by that is the weld looks the same across the entire length of the joint. Now the reason I'm talking about this is I'm often asked how do I create a good weld, but good weld means different things in different situations. Does it mean that you're meeting some code or specification requirement, or you're welding art, or just your stuck stuff stays stuck? Well, I think what most people are talking about is creating consistent weld. It just looks nice and it's likely to have fewer defects than one that isn't consistent. Short of some magical power that I certainly don't have, we can't directly control the weld bead profile or the consistency of our weld. What we have control over are the variables that then affect how that weld bead profile sits there in the joint. So let's break down the variables that play into this and then talk about some practical tips to be able to keep those consistent along the entire length of the weld. The first one is your contact tip to work distance. That's how far is this contact tip where the wire comes out from your actual joint. See the welding wires that comes out of here actually acts as an electrical resistor before the arc uh, occurs. So by increasing that length, you're affecting the voltage of the arc and that's going to affect the weld bead profile. So keeping that nice and short and especially keeping it the same across the entire length of the joint is going to be the first key to success. The next variable that plays into this is going to be your angle and in particular we'll talk about your work angle. Now what I mean by work angle is the angle perpendicular to the direction of travel. For example if I was welding a fillet weld between these two plates talking about this angle here, up and down. Along with that, your positioning has an effect, right? So you could be coming in at the right angle and be sitting up too high on the top plate or down too low on the bottom plate. The last thing that plays into this is gonna be your movement and in particular your travel speed. Because the faster you go, the smaller your weld bead's gonna be because you don't have as much time to deposit material. Likewise, if you slow down, it's going to give you a larger weld too. Those are the variables to control. Let me show you how to put that all together. So I'll go ahead and tack up a T-joint since that's what we've been talking about here. And look, when I try to do this freehand, it's very difficult to control all that movement and keep it from wiggling around. Sometimes you have to do that and you just do the best you can, but if you can use another hand to prop up, that's gonna help you out quite a bit. So I'll just triangulate between an elbow and my hand here, or even just put my hand flat if it's something that I can rest on to slide across. That's gonna make a pretty big difference in keeping those first three variables, my stick out, my angle and positioning all consistent. Then I just need to focus on my travel speed. For travel speed, this comes down to reading the puddle, moving like a robot and trying not to think too hard about it. I'll tell you what, when I think more about it, it seems like I do a worse job. So if you just practice and just let that puddle tell you the story, move along consistently so it's the same size, that's gonna do the trick. Now you might be wondering what about some kind of manipulation or movement of the gun and that's okay to do. That can actually be pretty helpful for pacing. I'd recommend keeping it pretty small and keep it all there within the weld pool. Now you might be thinking that's consistent but I wanna have a bit of a rippled pattern to my weld. Really the key to that is turning your settings down just a little bit lower than you'd run for the plate that you're on and then you're gonna make a larger manipulation of the weld gun. By doing this consistently, like a robot, and maintaining those same variables that we talked about, your stick out, angle, and positioning, then you're gonna have a consistent weld that has that rippled appearance. I tend to favor the smooth stringer bead over the rippled appearance. However, who am I to say what's gonna work better for someone else, and if it's strong enough and you like the looks of it, then that's just fine too. Now, if you are just getting started or you're struggling to make the progress that you want to with your welding technique, I have put together some online courses that uh, have proved to be helpful for a lot of students so far. So check them out. I keep them as affordable as possible. I'll link that in the description. I always appreciate your comments, letting me know what you're working on, what you're struggling with. I don't have time to respond to all of them, but I do read the comments that come in on the channel. So I appreciate you taking the time to uh, comment there below. Till next time, weld safely, and we'll see you then.